Welcome back, nature keepers. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees, and by the time we're through, you'll be speaking for nature too. Today, we're happy for hippos. The name hippo is short for hippopotamus. Can you say that five times fast? Hmm? Hippopotamus, 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 hippopotamus. <sighs> Moving on. We are in Sub-Saharan Africa, right by a big, beautiful river. Hippos live in rivers, lakes, and swamps, just like this one. Hello, hippo. The name hippopotamus means water horse in Greek. But guess what? Hippos aren't related to horses at all. Their closest animal relatives might be pigs, whales, or even dolphins. Did you know that hippos spend most of their time underwater, but they don't swim? They can't even float. Instead, they walk or bounce along the bottom of the river. As they move, they stir up the dirt on the river floor, kind of like a big underwater bulldozer, making new paths and helping fish and plants find food and places to live. I love my river guardians. <sighs> Hippos sleep a lot during the day because they are most awake at night. They waddle out of the water, wiggle their tiny ears, and use their super sniffers to find tasty treats, like juicy fruit that falls from trees. Do you know what sound a hippo makes? Well, they sound like this. What a funny sound. Can you make a sound like a hippo? Oh, that's great. While hippos look cuddly, they can be fierce fighters. Hippos have sharp tusks and use them to fight off lions, crocodiles, hyenas, and even each other. Hey, watch it there. Hippo moms are super protective and will chase away anything that comes too close to their baby. And when baby hippos get tired, they ride on their mom's backs like a little boat. <laughs> hey, little guy, you got a ticket? Even though hippos are strong, they still need our help. Their homes are getting smaller, and some people hunt hippos for the ivory in their big teeth called tusks. But we can help keep hippos safe. Now, let's meet some hippos at the San Diego Zoo in California. Hi, Lorax. Hello. I'm Jen. I'm a senior wildlife care specialist here at the San Diego Zoo. What's it like caring for hippos? Hippos are so much fun to work with. Oh, yeah? What do they do all day? <laughs> hippos usually sleep during the day, but other times they can be sassy and spunky and really silly. I bet they eat a lot. What's feeding time like? Hippos are herbivores, which means they eat plants. And here at the San Diego Zoo, we feed them a variety of hay. They get some produce like apples, melons, corn is one of their favorites. Hey, mine too. They eat about 80 to 90 pounds of grass every night in Africa. What do you think of my hippo impression? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, but it could use a little work. Hey, is that a baby hippo? Well, actually, that's a pygmy hippo. We have two species of hippo here at the San Diego Zoo. We have river hippos and pygmy hippos. They're so little. Pygmy hippos are much smaller. That right there is an actual baby pygmy hippo, and we call it a calf. Oh, it's so cute. Most of their time during the day is in the water. So that's when the sun's out, it's really harsh, so they can stay in the water and stay nice and cool and protected from the sun. Oh yeah, it gets really hot in Africa. I hope they wear sunscreen. 
Hippos have their own sunscreen. It's built right in. It's a mucus that they secrete, that when it dries on them, it crystallizes. And it creates this force field and it locks in moisture, helps keep them nice and cool and hydrated, but also reflects the sun's rays. You said secrete? That's like sweating, right? They call it blood sweat. And um, it's not blood or sweat, it's a mucus, yeah. Mucus? Like boogers? <laughs> Can hippos breathe underwater like fish? No, hippos can't breathe underwater, but they can hold their breath for a really long time, about five minutes. That's so cool. We really got to help protect the hippos. The San Diego Zoo works with conservancies in Africa to help the river hippo. They work on restoring their habitat and also making sure that they have grazing areas. Hippo, hippo, hooray! Thanks, Jen. Bye, see you next time, Lorax. You can help protect hippos and other freshwater animals by saving water, like turning off the tap while brushing your teeth to keep rivers and lakes full. You can also remind others not to buy things made from animal teeth or tusks. Hippos need their big teeth to stay safe. And you can learn more about hippos and other animals by reading books or visiting your local zoo. Thanks for joining me on our hippo adventure. <laughs> Hello, nature keepers. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. And by the time we're through, you'll be speaking for nature too. Come along with me and grab your reef safe sunscreen because today we're going to the beach. Ah, yes, the beach. A place where you can go play in the ocean build a sand castle, and have some ice cream. But there is so much more at the beach. It's teeming with life. Beaches are made out of sand. Sand comes from rocks, minerals, and even shells. Water, wind, and weather over thousands of years causes these things to crumble like a cookie. That's called erosion. Have you noticed any living things while you were at the beach? Take a closer look, and you'll see tons of plants, insects, birds, fish, and animals all call the beach their home. But things like trash, pollution, and overfishing are bad news for marine life. That's why they need our protection. Let's visit the Marine Mammal Care Center, where some lovely humans are saving the lives of wild seals and sea lions. The Marine Mammal Care Center is a hospital for sick and injured seals and sea lions that strand on the coast of Los Angeles County. We have thousands upon thousands of sea lions and harbor seals that live right off of our coast. And they'll haul out on the shore if they're not feeling well or if they just need to rest. The seals and sea lions that we see here at the Marine Mammal Care Center come to us for a variety of different reasons. The primary reason is lack of nutrition. We're gonna make sure that they get the care that they need so we can get them rehabilitated, which means helping them to feel better, and then released back out into the ocean. Everyone that you're seeing today, almost everybody is a year old or less. So we have a California sea lion. You can tell a sea lion as different from a seal. If you notice ear flaps on the outside, long front flippers that he's balancing on with no claws, and his rear flippers tucked underneath his body. So a sea lion, can more or less walk on all fours as opposed to the elephant seals and the harbor seals that have to inch around on their bellies like a worm. We call it uh, galumphing is the name for that. So the elephant seals here, these are the ones getting really close to release. Their eyes totally black because this is a very bright uh, situation for them. Considering that they dive hundreds if not thousands of feet below the surface where it's really dark and really cold, when they come up to the surface, it's gonna be really bright. Those whiskers allow them to sense the ripples made by a fish or a squid that's swimming through the water. So they can use those to be able to hunt down their food, even if it's pitch black. The harbor seals that we have, they'll feed on the shoreline and beaches, harbors, kelp forests. They're gonna find little fishes in between the cracks and crevices and things like that. And then our California sea lions, they're open ocean specialists. We feed exclusively herring and sardines. It's what gets them the most nutrition, the most fats, the most water, everything that they need. 
Oftentimes the animals can gain two to three times their body weight while they're with us. So they can grow incredibly fast. And then we'll put the animal into sometimes a large dog kennel is what we'll use. And then we have this other device we call the moon buggy. It has these big wheels that roll on the sand, drive them down to the beach, and then show them the ocean. And oftentimes they just cruise right out of the pen and, and into the water. There's so much that we can all do to help to protect marine life, no matter how old you are. Thinking with the environment in mind is one of the most important things. We can make sure that we're reducing the amount of plastic that we purchase, that we're reusing things over and over and over again so we're not creating new waste. But also, something that we can do all the time is talk about it, like protecting marine life, protecting marine mammals, sharing the shore, making sure that wildlife has a space to be wild. If we're not talking about these things, then those things just won't happen. They don't happen on their own. Hear that, nature keepers? There's lots of ways we can help the marine animals, especially the seals and sea lions who spend a lot of time on the beach. Well, now that you've learned about how to speak for the beach, I'm giving you a truffle -a trophy. <laughs> You can collect all my trophies by learning about other amazing places and animals you can help protect. Thanks for caring, and keep it up, nature keepers. <laughs> Hello there, nature keepers. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. And by the time we're through, you'll be speaking for nature too. Today, we're staying cool Penguins. Welcome to Antarctica. We are on an iceberg with a lively colony of wild penguins. While penguins are birds, did you know they can't fly? Instead, they swim. Whoosh! Oh, oh they sure go fast. On land, they waddle, slide, and scoot around. They are a little bit more graceful in the water, don't you think? There are 18 types of penguins. And guess what? They all live in the southern half of the world. That's the bottom half. Not all penguins live in the snow. They can be found in South America, like these chinstrap penguins. New Zealand, like these yellow-eyed penguins. Oh, <laughs> they look like they got goggles on. And even Africa like these African penguins. The biggest penguin is the emperor penguin, who stands tall at four feet. The smallest is the little blue penguin, who's only about as tall as your ruler. That's a foot. The fastest bird swimmer is the gentoo penguin. And the best rock hopper is the rock hopper penguin, of course. The rockhopper also has the best hairstyle. That's not scientific, that's just my opinion. <laughs> penguins eat small sea creatures like krill, squid, and fish. They don't have teeth, but instead they have spikes on their tongues to help them catch dinner. You ever have spikes on your tongue? I hope not. When it gets really cold in Antarctica, emperor penguins huddle together for warmth. Ah. Nice and toasty. Hey, stepped on my foot. Think of it as a life-saving hug. Penguins lay eggs like any other bird. After they hatch, mom and dad penguins let their babies ride on their feet to stay warm. They like to raise their young in giant groups called colonies. They're so fluffy. One of the largest colonies is home to about a million penguins. Now that's a penguin party. But many of the penguins' icy habitats are at risk. If the ice melts away, where will the penguins play? Come on, nature keepers, they need our help. Thankfully, lots of people are helping the penguins and teaching others how to protect them. Let's visit the San Diego Zoo, where we can see penguins and learn more about them. Hi, Lorax. Hello. My name is Debbie Denton, and I am a senior wildlife care specialist. Can you tell us about the penguins you have? 
Well, Lorax, we have African penguins here at the San Diego Zoo. A lot of people don't really think of penguins when they think of Africa. You're thinking about elephants or lions, but there are penguins that do live in Africa. What's it like being a wildlife care specialist? Taking care of penguins here at the zoo, it's a lot of cleaning. They poop every eight minutes or so. Eight minutes? Wow. So a lot of our morning is spent in the habitat with a fire hose. <laughs> you must really love those penguins. I just love them because they're feisty little animals. They have a lot of personality. They're very curious and they're just fun to watch. They're always doing something to make us laugh. Penguins are birds, so why can't they fly? Penguins can't fly because they're built for life at sea. So you're either gonna be able to swim really well or you're gonna be able to fly really well. And penguins swim really well. Their feathers trap air next to their skin and that helps keep them up on top of the water. I love how they're white and black. Is there a reason why they are these colors? It's a form of camouflage. If you're in the water and you look up, you're not gonna be able to see them because they're gonna blend in with the sky above. And when you're looking down at a penguin in the water, their black back is gonna blend in with the dark sea below. Wow, that's cool. They must be good at hide and seek. And what about those babies? Why are they so fluffy? Babies are fluffy so they can keep themselves warm when both parents are gone to find their next meal. Once the chicks get to be about eight months old, they grow in their waterproof feathers and they leave the nest. The penguins spend most of their life in the ocean and 100% of their diet comes from the ocean. So we feed them fish here. Hey guys. Two different types of fish and they get to eat as much as they want. So that's why they poop so much. <laughs> you sure look after them. African penguins are very endangered, and that's scary to someone who loves African penguins. They're challenged by not being able to find food, the changing ocean temperatures, taking their food further away. They're challenged by oil spills in the area. But we're very proud at the zoo to be able to go to Africa and help with the rescue and rehabilitation of some of these birds. Thanks for telling me all about the penguins. Bye, Debbie. Thanks, Lorax. It was nice meeting you today. Here are some of the ways you can help keep penguins and other animals that live in icy cold places safe. Use less plastic and always put used plastic in the recycling bin so it doesn't end up in the ocean. You can write letters or draw pictures asking companies to protect marine habitats. And you can learn more about penguins and other animals by reading books or visiting your local zoo. Thanks for joining me on our penguin adventure. I'm giving you a truffle a trophy. You can collect all of my trophies by learning about other amazing animals and places you can help protect. Keep on caring, nature keepers.